Welcome back to my course on phonetics and phonology. In this video, I'm going to show you the nature of distinctive features and how these distinctive features are used to identify or to characterize each of sounds in English. Well, now, uh, why should we learn distinctive features? Or what is the advantage of learning distinctive features? This is a bit or a small background why distinctive features are important to be learned in studying phonetics. Okay, for example, P and P are two different sounds, but based on their place and manner of articulation, they belong to the same sounds. Both are bilabial passive consonants. Both of them are bilabial passive consonants. The same case also happened to the sounds and D. Both are alveolar passive consonants. Both of them are alveolar passive consonants. And also the, the pair of F and V, both are labiodental fricative consonants. So you can see that the two different sounds, but they have the same features based on place and manner of articulation. This is what we are going to solve. Okay, this problem is going to be solved by using distinctive features. Suggested by its name, distinctive features are taken from two words, distinctive and features. You see, features can be defined as characteristics or elements and distinctives, the ability to distinguish, okay, the ability to distinguish. So, we can simply say that distinctive features are features with the ability to distinguish. Now, there are some concepts or some basic concepts that you need to know in terms of distinctive features. The first one, distinctive features show that all segments or sounds must be characterizable in terms of some unique combination of features. The unique combination of features will identify one sound. In other words, this combination will distinguish one sound from the other sound or from the other sounds. In other words, by using, by using these features, you can find that there is no any singular sound. There is no any singular sound which is produced exactly in a similar way, okay? Even though based on place and manner of articulation, they belong to the same group, but there must be a feature that distinguish these sounds. And the features with the ability to distinguish the sounds is known as distinctive features. Distinctive features are specific features, okay? As I told you, with the ability to distinguish one sound from another or specific features that can distinguish one sound from another. There are three requirements in the use of distinctive features. The first one, the features should be able of characterizing natural segment classes. The feature should be able to characterize natural segment classes. The next one, the second one, the features should be capable of describing all segmental contrasts in the world languages. Even though in this video, we are focusing on English language, but these features are actually applicable in analyzing or in distinguishing one sound from another in all of languages in the world. And the last one, or the third one, the features should be definable in phonetic terms. Well, um, the features in general, or in uh, a broad category, the features can be divided into three. The first one is place features. The second one is manner features. And the last one is voicing features. 
in terms of place features, we are introduced to two kinds of features. The first one is anterior, and the second one later is coronal. Anterior is used to distinguish the sounds produced by involving the front sides of our mouth. Okay, so all of the sounds which are produced by involving the front part of our mouth are called anterior consonants. Now, we need to define which parts of our mouth that belong to the front sides of our mouth. Based on experts, okay, the front sides of our mouth include our lips, teeth, and alveolar ridge. So all of the sounds that involve lips, teeth, and alveolar ridge are called anterior consonants. And of course, you know, the sounds that belong to anterior consonants are bilabial, labiodental, dental, and alveolar consonant. Now, the second one, as I told you, the second one is coronal. Coronal is distinguished or is identified based on the involvement of our tongue and exactly uh, you know, the front side of our tongue or the tip and blade of our tongue. Okay, this is coronal. And you see, um, the sounds which are produced by involving our tongue include dental, alveolar, post-alveolar, and parallel consonants. These sounds are called coronal. Now, let's see. If one sound belongs to the anterior consonants, it means that it belongs to a positive anterior. And if it is produced without involving the front side of our mouth, it belongs to negative anterior. So we, we use two symbols, positive and negative, for anterior and coronal. There will be positive anterior consonant and negative anterior consonants. Positive coronal consonants and negative coronal consonants. Let's see the examples. Okay. These sounds are called positive anterior. Okay. P, B, M, W, F, V, Th, 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 D, S, Z, N, L. They are positive anterior. Other than these sounds are called negative anterior, or they do not belong to anterior consonants. And uh, the sounds or the consonants that belong to positive coronal are th, th, t, t, s, z, n, l, ch, j, r, sh, j, and y. These sounds are positive coronal. Other than these sounds belong to negative coronal. However, you can see here that some sounds belong to positive anterior and also belong to positive coronal. Therefore, we can combine the use of these two features which result in positive anterior positive coronal, and the sounds that belong to positive anterior and positive coronal are th, th, t, t, s, z, and l, okay? So you can find these sounds in both positive anterior and positive coronal. And then when we use negative for both, negative anterior, negative coronal, it means that the sounds which are not listed here, and they are velar consonants, k, g, n. So you can see that the symbol positive and negative can be used to specify a group of sound from the other group of sound, or to specify one sound from the other sound. 
And you can also practice by yourself when you want to, to find out the sounds that belong to positive anterior and negative coronal, for example, or negative anterior and positive coronal. Okay, and you can see that um, distinguishing sounds based on uh, distinctive features, okay, um, is able to characterize the, the features or be, uh, to characterize one sound from the other sound. Now, let's come to the classification of um, distinctive features based on manner of articulation, or we can say manner features. Based on manner features, there are six features introduced. The first one is continuum. Continuum is characterized by uh, the presence of free airflow through the oral cavity. In other words, after the sounds are produced, the airflow must still be let free. Don't stop it. Okay? Don't stop it. Once you stop it, you don't produce that sound anymore. For example, when you want to produce for example, okay, you have to let the air free. Don't stop it. Okay? So just let it go until the end of the airflow. So when you say don't say when you stop it, you don't produce s anymore. So this sounds is called continuum. So the the airflow should be let free, even though the sound has been produced. There is continuum consonants. The next one is nasal consonants. Nasal consonants distinguishes the sounds which are produced through nasal cavity from the other sounds which are not produced through nasal cavity. Okay, for example, mm, mm, mm. these are nasal consonants. They are produced by involving the nasal cavity because you let, you let the airflow go through your nasal cavity. The third feature that belongs to many features is strident. Strident characterizes the sounds in which there is a friction. Okay, so um, this feature specifies the sounds which are produced by the involvement of friction or noise. And the friction you see is the result of forcing the air passage go through narrow oral cavity. Okay, and you also know that um, fricative and affricates are sounds which are produced by involving okay, the, the friction or his sounds or noise. So the sounds which are produced and these sounds are accompanied by a kind of friction or a kind of noise. These sounds are called strident in terms of distinctive features. The next feature is sonorant. Sonorant is used to distinguish non-observant sounds from obstruent sounds. Okay, it distinguishes the sounds which are obviously uh, uh, obstruents which are obviously block okay with with the sounds which are not fully block and of course you know sonoran distinguishes glides liquids and nasal from stops and fricatives the next one is continental continental actually is the nature of consonant the absence of, uh, sorry, the presence of blockage. All of consonants must be consonantal, except w and y, because they are semi-vowels. They do not belong to consonantal because, you know, the blockage is not very clear. Therefore, they belong to a half consonant and half vowel. And for the, the, the uh, distinctive features, they are not 
categorized as consonantal consonants. And the last feature is delayed release. Delayed release is characterized by the, by the slow release. You release it slowly, okay? And before you release it slowly, you have to stop the air, okay? Stop the air and release it slowly. And only two sounds in English which belong to delayed release consonants, they are ch and j. There must be a pause before you release it, okay? And of course, you know, this pause is stop, yeah? So this is a, 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 a pause that is a stop for a while. Yeah, there is a, uh, we can't say uh, a small stop before the, the sounds are released or before the air is released. And they, and these sounds belong to delayed release consonants. Now, um, the last feature is voice features. Okay, voice features are used to character characterize the sounds which are produced by causing vibration in the focal cords from other sounds which are produced without any vibration in our focal cords. And you are introduced to positive voice and negative voice or known as voiceless consonants. Okay, I have already introduced you to all of types of features that belong to uh, distinctive features. Now, the question is how these features work in order to identify a sound, in order to distinguish one sound from the other. Okay, based on the explanation or based on the uh, types of features that I've already introduced to you, we can draw a table, okay? We can draw a table or called a distinctive feature table. And you see here, these are the sounds, okay? The, these are consonants in English, and these are the features, okay? You can practice by yourself, yeah, to put whether a certain sound belongs to positive anterior or negative anterior, whether the sound belongs to positive coronal or negative coronal, positive continuum or negative continuum and so on. So that later, when you have completed the table, okay, you can find that each of the sound, okay, each of the sounds is produced in a different way. Or the you can find that each sound is the result of a combination of different features. Okay, there is no any single sound which with uh, with which has the similarity. Okay, which has the similar all distinctive features. Okay, with the other sound. Okay, now um, now let take F. Okay, let's take F, this one. Okay, we have completed the features for F and this is the result. Okay, the result, so F belongs to positive anterior, negative coronal, positive continuum, positive nasal, uh, sorry, negative nasal, positive strident, negative sonorant, positive consonantal, negative delayed release, and negative voice. Okay, so uh, these features, okay, the combination of these features specifies sound f. Okay, specifies sound f. Now, the question is, do we need all these features in order to describe or in order to characterize a single sound? The answer is no. Okay, you don't need all. Okay, but if you ask me questions, how many features are used in order to characterize one sound? My answer is it depends. Okay, it depends on whether 
the combination of sounds has already represented a single sound. Okay? Now, let's see. You can omit nasals here because there are only three sounds that belong to nasal. So you don't need nasal for negative nasals. Okay? You only need nasals for positive nasal consonants. Other than positive nasal, you don't need to label the, the sound with this feature. And the next one also, delay released, because delay release is uh, especially used to characterize two sounds, ch and j. So you don't need to use delay released. And then you also don't need to use consonantal because all of consonants are consonantal except okay except semivowels were and yeah okay now you can find that in order to describe f you only need four features in other words these four features have already been able to characterize F, to distinguish F from the other sounds. Now, um, if you ask me the other question, how, okay, how do we do uh, to, uh, to determine which feature is important to be included in describing a certain sound? and which feature is not needed. Now, um, I can give you an example. Uh, for example, if you want to describe t, and if you want to describe other sounds, okay, other sounds other than nasal, okay, other than a delayed release, other than negative consonantal, you need to write the Two features. These features are very important. What are they? Anterior and coronal. Okay, so you have to begin your description of a sound by using the two features. Okay, anterior and coronal. You can see that t is produced by involving the front side of our mouth, that is our teeth, uh, sorry, our alveolar alveolar ridge and then okay it is also produced by involving our tongue okay so it also belongs to coronal the other sounds that belong to positive anterior and positive coronal include j s, z and l in other words if you only use these two features you still fail to distinguish one sound from another, or you you still fail to characterize a single sound. So what does it mean? It means that you need the other feature. Okay, it means that you need the other feature. For example, we add continuum feature by labeling it with negative, negative continuum. Why? Because t is not continuum. When you add this feature, some sounds here are eliminated. So, z, z and L, okay, are eliminated. Why? Because they are continuant. Okay, they are continuant. Nevertheless, there are still three sounds which are described by using these features. Once again, what does it mean? It means that you need to add the other feature okay you need to add another feature okay let's say uh we add here negative voice okay when you add negative voice why you add negative voice because t here is voiceless so it is negative voice now when you use negative voice the other sounds are also eliminated D and N are eliminated because they are voice. So, by using these four features, 
you have been able to uh, describe or to characterize t from the other sounds, only t has the combination of these features. The other sound must have the other combination of the features, okay? Which is different from these features. Now, let's see the other example. The other example is sound j. Now, when you um, when you want to describe j, you see here that the first feature that you need to use is delay realist. And when you use delay realist, there are only two sounds left. What are they? J and J. If the case is like this, you only need to add one more feature in order to complete your uh, uh, identification of J. What is it? Okay, positive voice, because J is positive voice and J is negative voice. So you have been able to describe J. Okay, the other sound which has a minimum number of uh, distinctive features is mm, because mm is nasal. Only three sounds that belong to nasal, m and mm. And if you want to describe mm, you see that mm is velar consonant and velar consonant is negative anterior. Meanwhile, m and mm are positive anterior. Okay, by adding the feature negative anterior, you have already been able to describe or to characterize ng from the other sound. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, okay, you have already been exposed to distinctive features, and I do believe that uh, you can understand the materials very well, but if you want to know more, okay, you can uh watch and rewatch okay until you understand the concept of distinctive features well that's all and see you in the next video